Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to develop a custom Moodle block. In this session, we will continue with global configuration. We did not finish in our first session, so we'll continue where we left off. But before we do, let's I'm going to do a little bit of review. Let's go to the github.com Moodle page and so this is git, github.com Moodle and there's a link to the Moodle repository and then as I mentioned before there's 16 branches so let's select the branch that we're interested in and we're interested in 2.6 And I, you know, I assumed that you knew something about repositories or how GitHub works. And let's just go. Let's just go to the block that the that we looked at the blocks directory and then that class file that we this one. So if we click on this is the last the latest commit, and you can see that that was done over a year ago. And this is just the label that's used when it was committed. Well, if you click on this link, you can actually see exactly what changed in that commit. And so there wasn't much of a change here. Actually, there was no subtractions. There was actually additions to the code noted by the, the color and also the plus signs over here to the left. So this was added to this Moodle block.class.php file on this specific commit. So if we just go back and just literally click on any one of these, we can actually see exactly, well here's a case here, where there was actually some additions and subtractions. It was, it was initially in the core package, but it was moved to the core underscore admin package. So you can go through, so let's say that you're, you have an interest in a specific issue that was fixed in a previous edition, or you want to compare what, what changed between one version and the next version, this is how you would do it. The problem would be how, you know, which files were actually changed and or finding the files that were actually changed. So I guess in that respect you could go and let's say grade. So there's so if you could find the specific file this would be the the most current version and then here would be the latest fix. And in this case, it looks like just the comment was changed. Again, if 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 you know, it, it, you know, it could be really interesting. If uh, I know there's cases where things we know things have changed, but we can't find anything in the release notes. This would be a way of of determining what, exactly what's changed between versions. Just FYI, it's a pretty powerful tool. The next thing I want to review is the convention used to identify the global setting. So let's go back and then how it's and then how that global setting is actually placed in the database or, or which database table actually goes into. First the first thing is here's the convention. This is the recommended convent convention for naming fields that are added to global configuration. If you prepend the field, the setting, with a custom namespace, and in, in, in this case the custom namespace is the block name, if you do that, then this, this setting can be found in the database 
table, it would be the prefix, prefix underscore config plugin table. And by prefix, it means like the MDL in our case. Really, really that's pretty much the, the convention that a lot of people use for, for modal. So MDL underscore config underscore plugin is where this field, this setting, can be found. So let's go ahead and go to a database and let's look for MDL config underscore plugins. So there it is there. And let's search for the plugin where plugin equal hello world and go. So there it is. So there's our setting. We here's the plugin name, hello world, and there's our background set background. And then we went in at the end of our last session, we went in and changed it to uh, one or enabled, which would be a value of one. So that's how that works. If we didn't use that convention, if we simply named the if we simply named instead of prepending it with hello world if we simply named it set background then the field would be accessed through this global config object and it would be placed in the MDL underscore config database table. So instead of being placed in this table with using the custom namespace, it would actually end up in this. And, and they, they mention, you know, they kind of hint as to why they want you to use this convention is because of the fact that if it's stored in, in the global config object, then it's just going to continually grow and grow and grow and get larger and larger. Now let's go back to our... Oh, there was one other thing. These functions that are used to create the different elements in the admin global settings, the reference page or a reference page for that can be found right here under admin settings. And so this is this would be the reference. You have to read this for yourself. There's quite a lot here. And mm -hmm. but it will it would explain, at least give you a starting point there may be other references in terms of what what to do or what what's available when it comes to admin settings adding admin settings to the global configuration here it, it shows us the con the what is the definition of the constructor and the name visible name description and then a default setting and that's exactly what we've done we've done here. Here's the name, the name, the visible name, the description, and then the default setting. So just FYI on that too, just a little more reference material there. Okay, let's go ahead and work on finishing this configuration for the global configuration. Let's actually get it to work for us, even though it's kind of a drummed up example that really doesn't do anything. We'll at least show, you know, that it works. 
since we did use the custom namespace, then we can use this git config to query the database to get our the fields value. But before we do that, we're going we're going to need to override function in the in our block. And the one we want to override is let's take a look here. We want to override we're going to set the background so we're going to have to do something with the HTML attributes. And let's find it find that signature of that function. It's in the block base. So let's just search for HTML attributes. There it is. So this is the default function. And we're going to have to override this functionality, but yet include it. We'll do it this way. First, we'll need to get an at get a an attributes array from the parent. And what that does is, is actually it grabs this and returns that into the attributes array. Now we'll actually need to put in, use that git config. function to get our set background that equals one then we will want to Take the attributes array and the class set the class attribute, HTML attribute. So we're, we're going to want to add our set bg class to this array element if the set background is enabled and then we'll just simply return let's get this set up a little bit different a little bit better then we'll need to return the attributes array and that should do that now we'll need to add a the convention for adding CSS to your block is we add a file called styles dot CSS and then in this file, we're going to want to define our class dot set bg. And we're going to want to set the background to color. And let's make it red and make it real obvious. Now. That should pretty much do it. That should do it. So let's change our version number. Let's 
go to our side okay it recognizes that there's a change uh, it looks like we might have an error let's try that again yeah I think there's an error let's take a look over here and looks like maybe we have one too many curly braces. Try that again. This time it looks like we're going to maybe have some success. There we go. Continue. And let's go to our... So we, we set the bat while well, we can see if you look real close here you can see that the the background is set to red it's just that there's there's nested div divs and even though we we say set background we can maybe just change that style let's just say color So it does work, it's just not, just really didn't expect that there would be that nesting, but that's okay. We need to change the version. Again, it's really not clear to me when it, it's, it's necessary to change a version and when it's not. I've not really seen anything in the documentation that has been a little bit hit and miss. So we'll need to upgrade the plugin. Success, continue. And go to our home. And there we go. We can see that that our configuration change or the fact that we have that set background which is a global configuration set to one that we get a change in the CSS now if we disable that we should go back to our regular CSS which that's exactly what happened okay I think that's about it for this session I'm not sure what will be the next ses session maybe get into how to create a database and then permissions and that's that's going to probably wrap up this entire series I'll probably take a couple at least a couple more sessions to take care of those two that's it for now we'll talk to you later bye bye